Hi everybody, this is going to be a really strange one and it's not going to be for everybody but I had a really good idea or I think it was a really good idea. We've got a couple of snakes at home and they shed the skins and the beautiful, they go in the bin, that's the end of that. So I thought what about trying to make a snake skin notebook or whatever. But so obviously what you're going to need to make this is a friend or a snake skin of your own. When, when the snake shed the skin, this is what you get. As you can hear, it's really dry and brittle. So what I thought was if we can somehow make this soft and supple, then we can add it to something and make a great effect. I'm oh, sorry, I know this is going to really freak people out. But it, I hope it's an experiment. This is it. I've not tried it before. I'm just having a mess around and a bit of fun. So what I did last night, I got some glycerin and water and put it in a spray bottle. And this is what I ended up with. Look at the difference. It is soft and supple and I think it's going to work. So, here we go. Take your notepad. <laughs> Take a piece of snake skin. It's going to fit. So, bear in mind, it's a sausage shape. So, we'll cut this up. I'm really sorry guys, I know this is really going to freak some people out. Now look for the best place to cut it. And um, with mine, I cut it along the side of the belly scales. So we've got, we can see a little bit of everything, the pattern. And this is ripped here, so I think the best place to cut this is here. And we can make, that's going to fit beautifully on my little tiny notebook. I know, I'm, I'm really sorry guys, I'm really well aware this is going to freak a lot of people out, but it will be worth it. So, a little bit of glycerin in water, spray it really well, turn it over. Soak it, rub it in, this glycerin's really nice on your hands and everything, but... There you go. That is it. Leave it to dry. Leave it to dry overnight or however long it takes. I'm going to pop this out of the way. And I've got no So oh, What I did with the front of my notebook is a little bit of distress ink. So we can do that now. I've used Vintage Photo. Uh, this is probably going to freak all the stampers out as well. Look at the glitter on my ink pad. <laughs> Everything's got glitter on it in this house. And just vintage off around this the edge of this small brick. It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't matter what it really looks like, so we're gonna cover it up with some snake skin. Best route to go down with this is decide which way to put it. Should we put it that way? I think that could be it, you know. I think, yeah, we'll put it that way. Now, we need to decide which is the best way for the scales to go. I think this way. If you can see the scales, oh, this is going to, I'm sorry guys, I really know. These are where the belly scales are. If you can see, this is for the, mo the snake to move. This is the skin in between the scales. I think it's pretty fascinating, but I know it's going to freak so many people out. Judy, if you ever watch this, which I doubt you will, she's my boss. Um, she's got a real snake phobia. And I think the best way to adhere this to my notebook is to use a boot binding glue or a really strong tacky glue. Uh, I'm going to use pin flab with binding glue because it dries quick 
and it sticks everything it sticks fabric it sticks it's great and it's really thick gloopy now I did have a nice little spatula that went with it as you can see probably something like Arlene's tacky glue would do it some a quick all you want is a quick drying PVA glue that's all you need Actually, I think the effect of this underneath is going to look pretty cool. Like I say, it's not worked quite to plan with the distress ink because obviously the distress inks don't like water. Well, they do like water, that's the whole point of them, but it's looking pretty messy. But I think it's going to work. I'm so excited. So, which way to add this on? What do you think, guys? So we can see all of the scales. Here we go. That's it. We're done. It's on. So now, I'm going to use about a little roller just to make sure that's stuck down. Oh, it's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work. I like the way the distress ink sort of reacted with the glue. So, I'm going to come back. When this is dry. I just, I just can't believe it. I just really do think this is amazing. And I'm really sorry to all the people who are freaking out. But... Let's see what happens. You can even still see. I think this is from our snake called Carol. From Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, you can see all the markings in there. And with the distress ink underneath. It's looking pretty amazing. So, I shall be back as soon as this is dried. Okay? Guys, while my um, notebook was drying, I had a thought. I made this um, four leather cup, cuff, sorry, even, a little while ago. And what I thought was these roses would look beautiful on my four snakeskin, well, it's not even four, on my snakeskin notebook. So, while it's dry, while my notebook's dry, I'm going to make some roses and show you how I did those. If you want me how to show you how to make this cuff, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to do that. And it's the simplest thing. Using again, using all your crafty um, supplies. Because I used to be a paper crafter before I discovered polymer clear. And to be perfectly honest, I'm way better at polymer clear than I am at paper crafting. So let's make these roses. Stick them in the oven while we're waiting for the notebook to dry. So, I've still got some of this red glitter Primo. So, I'm using the red Primo and Spanish olive. If anybody's wondering how I store my clear, I use these plastic clippy boxes and I put a little bit of sellotape on the top and write on what it is in case I lose the packet. And then, once that's used up and you want to put another colour in there, you can peel the sellotape off, relabel it, job's done. Or, if you're really lucky and you've got a clear one, you can see what you've got. But, I kind of like this idea. Anyway, here we go. Again, if you remember, I was complaining this, this is really crumbly. But, it doesn't really matter. Like I say, as long as it's conditioned properly. Now, this is the Katie Sue mould. It came out a few weeks ago. And it is so detailed, like you can see, this is how the, the roses come out. All you need is a little bit of shading and the beautiful. But, oh, we have a close-up of that. They are absolutely gorgeous. I love them. And I know a lot of people don't like moulds, but really, you can more or less make them what you want. You, it, it's up to you, you know? So what we're going to do, we're going to use two colours 
and if you keep if you if you're a bit unsure you can always um make one out of scrap clear just so you've got kind of a reference but i'm going to do this in two colors so all we're doing is shading it once it's finished you fill them all right up to the top you can see the de it's so detailed it's so easily easy to do um I think what we'll do is we'll just use the buds because it's quite a small notebook rather than using the whole rows. Like so I'm gonna go around and do them all, which really it's not the best idea to be honest. Do one at a time, take your time. Remember you can overlap colours at the back because it doesn't matter the cover with polymer clear. I just really thought I've got this snake skin lying around. And I was going to actually try putting it on MDF, but then I thought a notebook would be pretty cool. So I think I've got some um, dragonfly MDF blanks, and I thought the snake skin would make a cool vein pattern on the wings. So maybe that's another video for another time. But obviously, you need a snake <laughs> or a snake skin. So if you've got a friend or, well, yeah, you need either a pet snake or a friend with a pet snake to give you a, a snake skin. So it's not going to be for everybody. I was also wondering as well if it would work if I pushed the snake skin into really soft polymer clear if we'd get a nice pattern so that's something else to try. So as you can see where the joins are it's quite messy but this is the back and as long as you've followed the detail in the front it will be perfect. So let's see what we've got. So with the KT Sue moulds what you need to do is flex them. And you'll find the clear just comes away. And then if you turn it over, there you go, as you can see, it just falls out. So there you go. Like I say, it's probably better to do one at a time till you get used to them. Flip it over and it just falls out. Look at the detail. Absolutely gorgeous. See the detail on that? What do you think? Maybe we'll do another leaf. Just to cover this. Or maybe a couple more leaves. Just move that out there for a second. So, as you can see, we've got leaf, a leaf on its own. But you've got all these leaves attached to the stems on the other roses. So, I think we'll stick with the smaller ones. So all you're doing is you just fill in part of the mould. But look how detailed that is. What we'll do is we'll pick up some of that detail with some black chalk and paint. I like to use acrylic paint because it's pretty permanent. You can use it for most things and it's so you can get all your detail. And also for shading, I like to use black chalk or pastels. In this case, I'm actually going to be using black eyeshadow just because I've said all those things that I like to use. So what I'm going to use is some black, this is actually black glittery eyeshadow, black holographic eyeshadow, um, which I've never used as eyeshadow, but hey ho, just because I thought there's glitter in the, the polymer clear, so I thought we'll just stick with that for the moment. So what you need to use is a very fine 
brush. This is actually a, a nail art brush, but as you can see, I don't know, if you can see it's really fine. You can get into all the little nooks and crannies with that. Absolutely brilliant for this. But as you can see, look how things have changed that up. We can see a little bit of sparkle, but it brings out the details in the flowers. We want to grunge it up a little bit just because we've. Um, We're using it on a grunged up notebook, so we don't want them bright and shiny. So I'm going in under the roses, and uh, in case I saw details, you can see where the shadow is meant to be anyway. I'm just working. Don't be frightened, because like I say at the end of the day, I'll see it over and over and over again. It's pulling with clear, it's a bit of plastic, you know. It's pennies. You're not losing anything. You mess it up, so what? Mix it up, use that scrap clear. You'll find, I'll show you, um, scrap clear is really useful for things. You can you can cover your tools in it, you can, it's pretty handy. Just keep working, take your time, go in, move the dog hairs. There's always a dog hair in my work. Dog hairs and fingerprints. Just take your time. And obviously you can use any colour you want. To make a lovely necklace with a pendant black edges. Now, for that, I'm going to use a pointy brush, um, and this is a Ranger acrylic paint. It's, it's meant to be used with a dabber, so you can, you can use it that way, which means you're not wasting any paint either. All I do, let's see if I can show you this, is I just go over the edge. I'm not painting it, I'm rubbing the edge of my brush. Just picking up those edges. So I'm not actually trying to paint it, I'm like kind of. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm just trying to catch these edges with my paintbrush. Just to pick up a tiny little bit more detail. If you don't like it, you can always wipe it off. Start again. Sometimes you don't like something, and then when you look back at it, it's actually a lot better than you thought in the first place. Just rub this along the edge. So all you're doing is you're not actually, you just, it's like a kind of a tickling motion, I guess. Just to pick up the details on the edges. And then that's completely opposite to what I've just done because I've shaded everything, but it just picks up. I'll show you, I did it on there, on here. And it just really does pick up the, the detail. Some look really pretty. I love that glitter on so round. It's really sad. I've put glitter on everything. And we don't want, like I say, we, we're putting this on a snake skin notebook, so we don't really want it shiny and clean looking. We want it grungy. And, and I think this will just be the extra little bit of detail to finish our notebook off. So, I think we're done. Let these bits off. You can see, if you see there, you can see how we've marking still. There's a few little air bubbles which I've got a plan to sort out, but 
oh my goodness how cool is this but I think that's a little bit too plain for the moment and it'll need a bit of protection so I think we should add a little bit of wax um, or oh, what have I got here these are oil pastels so nice and waxy I think we should go possibly yeah so I'm just going to put a little bit on my and I'm going to use my fingers and I know there'll be so many crafters going no no but you can feel because this is quite tough but obviously we don't want to scrub it to death so I'll we'll just try a little bit on the corner and this is purely I'm just oh wow can you see that now that's picking up on the texture of the skin <gasps> my handbag and everywhere right, this one I get I got from Holland when I visit my family from the action I can't remember how much it was but it was cheap very very cheap but it says that it's transparent waterproof ready to use fabric hardener which can be used as a glue varnish or a base for paint application and brush it on let it dry well and then you can even add paint or stuff after that and it's waterproof so this should also fix up any of fix any of this lifting and make this a bit tougher. I've not even opened this. I've just got an old brush because I don't know how this is gonna be. I've given it a good shake. I'm just going to paint this on. And I really only want to go up to that black line. I don't want it over. I just want up to that black line. I'm being gentle. So I'll be back when this is dry and we'll add our rose. Okay. Hi guys, I'm back. Right, all I can say is OMG. This has worked out way better than I expected. So I don't know if you can see this properly under in the light, but with the copper, it feels lovely that I can do this and get rid of this excess skin. Just breaking away and it's sealed up pretty well. I'm absolutely amazed how well this has turned out to be honest, I'm quite excited. Um, this opens up a lot of other opportunities to use up my old new skins. Really concerned. So we've got our little rose we made. So I think that will cover that perfectly. I love it. I'm so excited. Quite sad, but I'm actually really excited. Um, this wasn't the video I was going to make. It is tacky PVA glue. Very well used. It's near the end now. Well, I've glued the end. Oh. I'm just cleaning out any little bits of extra glue. Well, it dries clear, it will dry shiny, so we don't want it everywhere. We just hold everything down so it's nice and solid. That's not, by the way, that's a, a bruise on the back of my hand. It's not dirt. <laughs> Uh, 
and it is you can see all the snakes markings and I am really sorry for all the people that's freaked out for a little bit of time and effort on those edges to seal them and I think this could be something really amazing just just need a little trim sorry it's you don't need to see me just going backwards and forwards, trimming and trimming. That's it. We are done. Thanks for watching. I apologise for anybody I've freaked out completely by this. Um, I really just thought snake skin is beautiful, although better on the snake. But good old Carol, she gave us free snake skin. Thank you, and I'll be back soon with something less freaky, I promise. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want to see something equally as random. A like would make us feel great. I'm sure this this is going to upset a few people, just because people are scared of snakes, snake skin, anything to do with snakes, but they're really not that bad. Again, I'm rambling on. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye-bye.